Welcome to Namecast. So, Kevin, I was driving the other day, mm-hmm. driving around, and I was going not too fast. I wasn't breaking the speed limit or anything like that, right? Being safe. I was being safe, but this dog jumps out right in front of me, hit it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and you feel terrible, right? Yeah. So I get out of the car, and I look over, and it looks like the dog's trying to do something. And I get down to the dog, and I look, and he turns, and he says to me, Hello, everybody. Welcome to Namecast. <laughs> My name is Nathan, and beside me is... Kevin. And this is our weekly podcast, where every week we do a different video game. This week, we are talking about the Banner Saga. Yeah. Mm, the Saga of Banners, Kev. Yep. There's, There's bananas. We got to saga them. Next week, we will be playing Campo Santos Firewatch. Ooh. Yeah. The walking simulator type game, Kev. Yeah. Now, there's lots of other things we're going to be talking about this week as well. We got the Super NES Classic. Uh, only going to be selling for three months confirmed so far. That's weird. Uh, we got uh, Star Fox 2 finally being released on the Super Nintendo Classic, unless you got mm-hmm. the ROM earlier and you're a dirty, dirty pirate. The amazing story behind Final Fantasy XIV is told by Noclip, and PS5 has been confirmed, kind of, sort of, Sean Layden. <laughs> anyway, that is what we were talking about this week. But Kev, we got to get into the, the things the people need to know. What have you been doing? Oh, jeez. Not playing very many video games. Yeah? I can tell you that. Okay. Um. Yeah, I played a little bit of Halo. Did some more of that Halo One campaign. That Halo One grind. Yeah. Is um, it, does it hold up? It's it's pretty damn fun. I I really like the pistol in Halo One. Like it just feels so good to use it. And yeah, so I'm enjoying it. But I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like there is one mission in particular that we did that like I just totally forgot it existed. Okay. And I'm still like questioning. It's like. Did they, like, patch this mission in? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so you're in this coded totally ship it. that Keys is, was captured on, and you have to escort him out of the ship, and you think you'd remember an escort mission, because normally they're fucking terrible, right? Yeah. Like, the worst. And this one is certainly pretty bad. You can't let him die, but he just loves to run into combat. And we're playing on Legendary, too, so he dies, oh, like, shit. two or three shots, which happens super fucking quick. Oh, man. <laughs> so, like... Yeah, it was, it was a big pain in the ass, and I, I I just didn't remember that this existed at all. Yeah. Now I'm, like, really excited to see Keys get turned into the Flood, like, taking over his body. And spoilers. Being disgusting. Yeah, spoilers. For, like, a 20-year-old for a game. game. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Not 20, but, yeah. F- 15, 17? Yeah, when did it come out? Like, 2002, 2001? Yeah, I think the 15-year anniversary was when the Halo CE remastered came out. It's all good, Kev. Anyway, what so, else yeah, you been doing? It's, it's old. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, let's start start working on that Persona script. This video is going to take forever. Yeah, it's going to be a long video, but oh my god, it's going to be good. I got nice. things to say. All the Japan uh, game. <laughs> exactly. That's what they call them. Japan, yeah. Yeah, Japan game. Yeah. What um, else, man? Anything else? Uh, no, not not too much else. Just the banner sugar. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what have I been doing? I've been, uh, poof. I've been doing some biking as I always do been doing some, uh, nope, not running. Uh, nope, not dodgeball. Uh, poof, I don't know. I'm involved in a real cool project that I can't really talk about, but it's really cool and <laughs> it's going to change a lot of things, not on this channel, but, uh, yeah, it's sweet. It's going to change your life. Maybe. Who knows? There's some, some cool opportunities because yeah. for those of you who don't know, I do video stuff outside of YouTube and it can't really be shown publicly because, like, I just work with certain businesses and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's cool to be able to use my skills in certain ways and maybe get paid for it. So that's sweet. Um, as far as games, I did play uh, Banner Saga. I didn't play anything else. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> I had to I had to think to myself for a second there if I had played anything else. That was no, no. I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess this is Dark Souls that we've been doing. Yeah, we've been playing some Dark Souls. It's been going well. Oh, I have also been working on that script that's coming out soon. I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag. It's all about Kingdom Hearts. Hopefully, you'll get a version of it this Friday. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) If this other project doesn't kill me first. But yeah, uh, so yeah, look forward to all the Japana game. (laughs) I'm going to make it a thing. It's going to be Japana game. Uh, Yeah, so let's just hop right into the news, Kev. We're... 
we're going in with no Vaseline, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we, we like to lube things up first, but sometimes I find that uh, spit is the best lubrication. <laughs> you just... Ah. Just giving you a look because that's all I got. The uh, look is like you're disgusting, and I don't know why I spend time with you. That is that, basically that was exactly yeah. the look of like, what the hell's wrong with you? What the hell's wrong with Nintendo? There is no direct confirmation on this, but they've only confirmed production of the Super NES Classic until the end is of. Is that 2017. what you're leading with? Like, yeah, just this rumor about. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting. <laughs> Instead of like the actual thing. Man, yeah, the Super Nintendo Classic, they're actually <laughs> making it. And I'm fucking happy. And the game list is dope. I think it's they, pretty good. The only, there's a bunch of complaints about, oh, this game isn't on it. The only really valid one is Chrono Trigger. Yeah. The next most valid one is that the Donkey Kong Country sequels aren't there because, you know, they're good. Yeah. And the first one is, so they should be. But whatever. Like, man, the fucking list of games on there is sweet. So, uh, yeah, I really want to pick one up. I'm hoping it's easier to find one than the okay. NES. Um. But yeah, there's there's a few. Everybody's all concerned about production. Yeah, and they said they're making fair. more units than uh, than the NES. Classic. Than the NES Classic, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. I also hope that the cord length exceeds three millimeters. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, three I'm pretty sure that's exactly what the other one was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I imagine they would have learned from their mistakes there. Well, they did learn a little bit. There's it comes with two controllers as opposed to just one. Yes. Yes, I've heard that, but it's a little more expensive too. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's a better console, so better console, newer games. Yeah. Everything like that. Now did you know that Nintendo's actually been having troubles getting parts? That's why they're uh, kind of behind on, on switches apparently. There's like some certain parts that they just they can't buy right now. Like there's Yeah, there's, there's not enough of them being manufactured. A lot of production choke going on with electronic components. Now how much of that do you think is on Nintendo themselves? Um I mean it's one of it's one of those things where it's if you're willing to spend money, you can get what you need. Right. You know, everybody has a price. If they paid more money, they would get the price. They, they would need. get exactly what they need. But yeah. you know, the business decisions to spend however much money they are spending on parts. Right. And, gotcha. Uh, so they're making it at the rate they can. Apparently, apparently things are getting better. Okay. Um, buddy of mine picked up a switch yesterday. Apparently, it was it just happened to be in at Toys R Us. And um, so yeah, I, I think it's starting to get a little bit easier to find a switch. Yeah, which is good. Um, hopefully, it doesn't affect the Super NES thing that much because the parts shortages are mostly on you know flash memory. I would assume they're unrelated. And well, yeah, but like it's Primarily. mostly on like flash memory type stuff. And yeah. this Super Nintendo games are super tiny so you don't need very yeah. much memory right you should but, be fine yeah, yeah it shouldn't shouldn't be too bad for for that okay I'm hoping anyways as long as nintendo isn't nintendo nintendo <laughs> isn't nintendo but in a yeah. very cool move they're releasing star fox 2 yeah that's super cool yeah man on the super nintendo entertainment system yeah so like star fox 2 is a game that they like got like pretty much completely done making yeah and then they're like, oh, we're making the N64, right. Frick, we should make Star Fox for that instead. So instead of releasing Star Fox 2 right at the end of the Super Nintendo life cycle, yeah. they started working on Star Fox 64. And they just didn't release the game. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, but now it's coming out on Super NES Classic, which now, is cool. Now, I heard there was a ROM of it out there in the wilds. Is yeah. this true? Yeah, it is true, but I, I'm not really sure what what that ROM is, how it got leaked, you know, what, what yeah. the actual state of it is. Because I hear, like, a uh, bunch of online chatter is like, oh, it wasn't really that close to complete. There's a bunch of bugs in it and stuff. And, you know, it's just based on this ROM that came out. Maybe the ROM was not the last version of the game they had. Right. Maybe it was an earlier gotcha. version. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, that kind of stuff. So it's probably not worth reading into the ROM that yeah. much. You know, obviously the game mostly still be the same. Okay, and you know it's mostly just a sequel to the first Star Fox, so just more, more of that. The first Star Fox was that like a Galaga kind of thing, or no, not even close. No, it was like the one of the first uses of like a three D chip on the cartridge to accelerate like three D rendering, and it did that kind of. Okay, stuff. so it kind of looked like the uh, what was it the Tie Fighter games, Star Wars ones? You know um, what I'm talking with about? like filled in polygons. And okay, stuff yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, it's cool. Kind of primitive 3D, but you know, it worked. It was a cool game and got the job done. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you play it on my Super NES Classic. 
Yeah, we got two <laughs> controllers. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe it's like six millimeters long. Man, <laughs> oh, all the all the mobility I get. Yeah. Now, are you a big Star Fox fan? Um, I know you play him in the Smash Bros. Oh yeah, play that Fox. Yeah. But, uh, yes, no. I really, really enjoyed uh, Star Fox Assault, which most people don't like. I don't oh, that's the one where you're on foot a lot, right? On the GameCube. Yeah, but like, there's also big sections and ships. Okay. Like our wings, which is really fun, and there's uh, landmaster sections, which are also really fun. Uh huh. And I don't know. I, I thought the gun combat stuff was actually pretty decent. I don't know. A lot of people hate on that game. I don't think it really deserves it. Doesn't but deserve the hate. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I liked it. Star okay. Fox 64. It's good shit, too. Yeah. And let's just not talk about uh, Stairfax Adventures. Stairfax Adventures. Yeah. What is this? Oh, wait. I think I saw someone talk about this. Like Jim Sterling, maybe, or someone. Or John Tron. Could have been John. John oh, Tron shit. It a, was John it Tron. Was, I think yeah. it's like most viewed videos. Yeah. Um, it was ridiculous. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's, uh, it's a it's a fun game. Okay. I don't know. Why why would you put fucking Star Fox in your Zelda? Yeah. And then make the Zelda real bad. <laughs> they kind of did but that anyways. with Mega Man as well. Mega Man sixty four. Yeah, Mega Man sixty four is kind of fun though. Yeah, it was kind of <laughs> fun. Its own it, was, way. it was like it a shooty Zelda. Good, yeah. It wasn't a very good Mega Man game, but it had its own kind of unique. Yeah, it had its own unique thing. appeal going on with it now what's interesting about the star fox 2 is that there's a uh, cool development story i imagine there someone yeah. who's really good at uncovering these development stories and really getting into them is no clip and we've talked about them for a while now yeah now they're releasing a uh, by they i basically mean just danny o'dwyer he has a <laughs> little, little bit much. of help <laughs> a little bit yeah. of help yeah from his patrons and like he does have some people that he works with as well but yeah, Final Fantasy fourteen. Now, do you remember this one? This was the MMO that started off, and it was hot trash. Yeah. Back in 2010. And then in 2013, came out as A Realm Reborn. Ooh. So what the hell happened? Well, Danny dives into that, and I think it's pretty cool, man. I don't yeah. know. I just I just wanted to talk about it on the podcast, because I want someone to talk about it with. It's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool little story there, and... Honestly, like this, I, I really like the previous Snowclip documentaries, but yeah. what's really nice about this one is it really gets into how the development went. Oh, yeah. And, you yeah. know, a lot of the kind of design decisions and the talks that were had internally in the studio and, you know, the struggles that they had and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, it makes it feel like a relatable story in that sense. And, you know, it gives you really good insight into you know the kind of stuff that developers go, go through yeah they're giving way more insight than i ever expected them to I know, like, like they're being way more open <laughs> talking a lot about the processes and stuff and, yeah you know, it's normally stuff you keep like internal confidential but yeah know, they're just cool yeah they're really open about everything that went on with it and like the uh the translation guys are like yeah we realized the game sucked and we tried to tell people but they're like nah it's fine yeah <laughs> and the most amazing thing was that they were working on this game and like a lot of the people that were involved in developing it were like, nah, we don't need to play WoW. It's fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Your biggest competitor that you're trying to take down? This game which, that like redefined the genre. Yeah, exactly. That like pretty much dominates it. Like that would yeah. be like, I don't know, trying to make a big RPG game and being like, Witcher 3? I don't know. Uh, it's fine. Like, <laughs> Well, no, let's, how about you, you play it and see what they're doing? Because obviously they're king of the hill right now. I don't know if that's a fair comparison. I think okay. a more fair comparison would be trying to make a superhero movie and never watching any Marvel movie. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay, fair enough. I think Marvel <laughs> is dominating yeah. superhero movies as much as WoW dominated <laughs> MMOs. Yeah, they, they have the player base for sure. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are into it. So I don't know, man. It was just it was cool to see that and cool to see how much of a difference one man really makes on a team. <laughs> really though yeah so yeah it's a lot of interview with uh his name yoshida something it's something yoshida yeah something yoshida um shuhei yeah. yoshida no shuhei? but no it's not <laughs> shuhei's from playstation uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways uh yeah he's the producer yeah for the project and i guess he has like a programming background and yeah he he just kind of stepped up and kind of took it over not completely like of his own volition either which is kind of interesting yeah. it's just like he's like hey this is what we need to do like this needs to be fixed 
And then everybody was just like, we want him to lead us fixing this. Yeah, so they got rid of two other guys, and they're like, uh, you you do the thing. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, they completely got rid of one other guy yeah. and put the other guy like beneath him. Yeah, exactly. Which is, yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of funny. So now, to be clear, what happened with uh, so Final Fantasy fourteen was that it came out, it was, eh, pretty crap. Mm-hmm. So they started patching it, and then... They simultaneously started working on another game entirely. A like, complete remake of oh, it. Oh, yeah. With a much smaller time schedule yeah. to get it out. And they then basically ended Final Fantasy fourteen with like the moon coming in and crashing kind of thing. Yeah, and like everybody getting teleported to like yeah. a parallel world. Exactly. And then it begins with a realm reborn yeah which players who are already like uh in final fantasy 14 can then get for free kind of thing and you hop in and then it starts up again with a uh, subscription pay and mm-hmm. i hear final fantasy 14 a realm reborn is actually fantastic is is all i've ever heard about it yeah so i don't know for them to be able to turn it around like that it's it's such a cool story it's impressive and pretty pretty unique story too which is, yeah i think what's really nice about it and you also have to think back to them like at that time not that Square Enix was definitely underdog, but like, I don't know, man. They put out a trash game like that. Eh. Yeah. The 13 games weren't that well received. You know, like it was just, it was a lot of, I don't know. It was pretty underdogish. Yeah. And now something I was talking to you about this is, you know, throughout the interview process, they constantly were saying, oh, Final Fantasy XI was such a huge success, such a huge success. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I remember talking to people about it. They're like, yeah, this game totally sucks. And it like didn't do that well in North America. But then you said something to me. So, yeah, Japanese companies are a little bit different. Yeah. They care, care a lot more about local yeah. success. And, Which is you know, that super kind of interesting. Stuff. Honestly, that probably leads into a little bit about why they didn't look at WoW that much. Because they're yeah. like, oh, it's a Western thing. You know, it doesn't matter so much for Japanese players. You know, it doesn't. You know, it's not as popular here or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, exactly. whatever s- excuses they come up with. And we've seen Nintendo do the exact same thing, too, with yeah. online stuff, not looking at what Sony or Microsoft's doing. Yeah. Like, you it's know. It's peculiar. Just that kind of stuff. And, yeah, it's just, it's this weird little culture thing with Japanese companies to care a lot about local performance and... Even though from a financial standpoint, that yeah. is not the best decision. Yeah. Like, by a mile. Yeah. But, you know... The other side of that, but it does too is weird. It keeps yes, them different. Yes and no. Okay. Um. So one one thing that's really really valuable there is actually market cap mm-hmm. for the Japanese stock exchange. Okay. Which part, a lot of the market cap stuff is actually based on future projections. Yep. Um, and in the case of the Japanese market, that is mostly, you know. The majority of the news that they're going to see about these Japanese companies is about how the, they are performing in Japan, right? As opposed to the international news. Um, so, yeah, if they're doing really well in Japan, that's going to raise their market cap more than if they weren't doing well in Japan but were doing well internationally. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So yeah, it all there, there's back. a little yeah. bit of financial benefit to caring yeah. more about Japan than international. But yeah. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Something else that's interesting from a Japanese company. We got uh, Sony, well, specifically Sean Layden, who I guess isn't Japanese, but anyway, <laughs> he's confirming that the PS5 is definitely going to be a thing and that the smartphone approach isn't sticking around. This is interesting. Is because it sticking we, around or isn't taking over? Isn't taking yes. over at this moment. Yeah. yeah. So now we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. Where, where, where do you come down on this, Kev? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It still feels like they're taking steps towards it with like the PS4 Pro and, yeah. you know, Xbox One S and Xbox One X. Jeez, this is going to be confusing. Um, yeah. You know, these kind of iterative improvements that are the same thing. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned this like in our pre E3 talks. Like, yeah, I don't think they're really ready for it yet. But I don't know. I could totally see, you know, PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 6 maybe being the last one. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. And then it's just iterative updates from there. Yeah. But, you know, I don't <laughs> I think both those models work for people, like everybody, you know. I like the concept of instead of a uh, console, you get like a subscription. Yeah. That'll probably get there eventually. Yeah, possibly. Like, yeah, it just depends on how the companies want to make their money. Yeah. 
And, you know, as long as they're making money, they're happy. As long as consumers are getting or want to spend their money on these products, then they'll be happy too. Right. Then I'll be good. I'll be good, man. Kind of feel bad to like rent a console though. (laughs) Just kind of what the subscription is. Yeah. I mean, I guess so, but I don't know. Yeah. On the other hand, like (laughs) it's not a big upfront cost. You know, this kind of gets into uh, repair laws and stuff. It's like, you know, Apple's especially bad for this. You you can buy a phone and that phone is your property, but they want legal control over what happens to that phone. Right. Like right. they don't want to let you repair your own phone. Yeah. And stuff like that. Like especially get into modifications and stuff like that. Mm, um, mm. You know, and something like a subscription model would like obviously completely illegal to modify something you rented. Yeah, like you are you are taking that property at that point, but yeah, the legality of it would be intriguing to say the least. Yeah, It'd be cool, man. Okay, I think it's time to maybe get on to the topic of the show, the main event. Let's get ready to rumble, Kev. Each and every week, as you know, we do a different uh, video game. Mm-hmm. This week, we are doing the Banner Saga. <laughs> Now, this is developed by Stoic. Publisher is Versus Evil. Now, Kev, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was a Kickstarter game. It was. Mm, it made, mm. made a little bit of Kickstarter money. A little by bit. a little bit, I mean a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, so it had a $100,000 goal. They crushed past that. It's 723886 Damn. Got the Off the tip of, of the tongue. Yeah. That's a lot of money. That's more than seven times their goal. Wow, math. Yeah. They say they're going to do a Vita port. Probably not, because it's supposed <laughs> to be out early this year. Yeah. It's it's already halfway through the year. <laughs> Vita port's probably not coming. Yeah. I expect a Switch port announcement at some point. Yeah, well, seeing as, I don't know, <laughs> man, the sequel has already come out, and the Banner Saga 3 just finished its Kickstarter. For, yeah. So, yeah, I doubt it. I don't know. Like there's A little bit of benefit once they get it working on Vita. It's easier to get the... Uh, sequels yeah over yeah fair enough but i don't know we'll see we'll see if it happens. He doesn't get enough love i'm yeah. saying it uh there's also a board game for it yeah i didn't know about this until it's kind of cool just looking it up yeah it's like a miniatures type thing so a little bit warhammer like but i imagine significantly more simple nice yes yeah, so and then cool. uh team is made up of ex bioware developers who hopped into it after working on the old republic yeah they wanted to work on their own sort of project like a game that they would want to play yeah i guess they didn't want to play the old republic apparently not but yeah so so that's kind of cool so they hooked up with versus evil who's a publisher focused on helping indie devs get their games out and they're like let's do it yeah so it's out on like all the things right now except vita so many things like that's a lot of things it's yeah (laughs) pc android ios linux os x ps4 xbone vita announced eventually yeah yeah (laughs) yeah this came out in 2014 so what it is is it's a uh, it's like a turn-based tactical game. Is the best way to describe it. Yeah, and turn-based strategy. Yeah, it's, it's sort it's of, ca- sort of. It's adventure too, though. Yeah, it's got a lot of adventure game elements to it. Yeah, a lot of story to it. A lot of story. Way more story than I expected. And if yeah, you haven't seen too. the game, it's beautiful. Is the best way I can describe yeah. it. Like it, it has a really interesting art style and kind of a couple different art styles in there, which I think we'll maybe get into in our actual review of the game a little yeah. bit more. But something I'm really intrigued by it was the uh, Viking kind of aspect, and the lore behind the Pharaoh was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Basically, one of your main characters in the game is yeah, a giant with like horns. Yeah, they're it's badass awesome. looking. Actually, I'll get the they character kinda... thing later because that's freaking confusing as hell. But anyways, yeah, yeah. You, they... you get to like experience like them being in this world and they work alongside humans but mm. the two kind of don't really get along that well yeah but thankfully the barrel are fairly peaceful like they don't want to just kill humans right or anything like that um and 
the humans really dislike them, but you know they're puny little humans in comparison, so they can't really do that much to them. No. So that's kind of like how that's kind are of the balance. relationship. Yeah, it's it's interesting too because um, seeing as they're ex-Bioware developers, the relationship is so similar to the relationship between the Canary and the humans in Dragon Age, which yeah. is also a Bioware game. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit more relatable though, instead of being completely medieval fantasy with yeah. like, very alien looking yeah. <laughs> um other creatures in the canary. Yeah, yeah. Um these are like yeah, kind of myth mythological. Very mythological with you know. They look like Vikings big men with horns, giants. basically. Yeah. 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 yeah it's pretty sweet. So it's pretty cool. Um yeah, it has the tactical style gameplay. So you know your uh you see your grids, yeah, you get to click around and, and you yep. move around, get next Turn to enemies, base. do attacks. Yep. Um it's should we get into how that works? Because yeah, it's honestly, Dive one of my her. favorite parts okay. of the game is how the actual combat stuff works. Get into it, man. So each character has armor and strength. Okay. When the character's strength goes to zero, they they die if it's an enemy. If it's your own guy, they're injured. Injured, yeah. Uh, talk more about that in a minute. But uh, yeah, so these strength and armor things work very interestingly together. Um Basically, armor, you know, it does does what it says it does. It'll reduce damage. Mm-hmm. Um, each point of armor you have reduces one point of damage. All fantastic. And whenever you attack an enemy, you can choose to target that armor specifically. Yeah. Or you can go after their strength, like kind of if the strength is health. Exactly. Um, so getting that armor down is kind of important so you can get your attacks in. And if your character doesn't have the strength to overcome that armor... Yep. Then you actually, for each point that the difference is, you lose percent chance to be able to hit their strength. And then they may just reflect the damage. Entirely. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of motivation to get that armor down um, so that you can start attacking their strength, which is super important. Yep. Because the strength, while it is like their health, it's also how much damage they do. Yeah, exactly. So, like, every little bit you bring that strength down makes that opponent less of a threat. Yeah. Which is super cool and, like, you know, if you do go after the armor so that you can do more damage to them later, you are taking on that risk of them being st- still being really strong yeah. and being able to do a bunch of damage. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I love that, that playoff of it was really you know, cool. how it works. And for me, for the most part, it ended up boiling down to archers are very important. <laughs> yeah, but also really fragile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, so it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I liked the combat a bit. If I'm going to be honest, I probably only played two hours of this game. I intended to play a lot more, and I just really wasn't in the mood for it. But yeah. that doesn't mean I'm going to say the game sucks or anything like that. It's just sometimes you're in the mood for certain games, sometimes you're not. Yeah, I played about like three and a half, so I don't think we'll get into any story spoilers because yeah. we can't even really talk about the story very yeah. much other than yeah. how it began. Um, Let's get into the story, man. I Okay, I'm sure this story is interesting. But by God, talk about a wall of text. So much it text. Just yeah, lays it just on you. It's through Dialogues between many characters. Yeah, and you know, you, and you just gotta have get to kinda, learning fast. Yeah, you, you have to get, you have to learn about kind of like you know what stuff's going on there just by pulling information out of this dialogue yeah. that's being said. So it's really hard to get into the story because of that. But at the very least, it does like sort of a Game of Thrones type thing where it's like you get to learn these characters mm. and you know maybe like them, although they aren't very likable characters. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's. If, if there's anything that's going to pull you along through the story in the early on, it's just wanting to learn more about specific characters. But I should note that when it does have voice acting, the voice acting is spot on. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is, it is pretty good. Um, Ooh, although, not a fan. Early on, there's some narration at the beginning that the voice acting was freaking terrible. Okay. That you probably wouldn't really notice as much. If it wasn't for the very thick accent, okay, that's yeah, being yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that stuck out to me like so much. I was like, oh, that's, that's not great. <laughs> not a fan. Yeah, um, but for the most part, the voice acting is is pretty good. It was really only that beginning narration bit that yeah didn't really like it. irked me. Okay, um, we should also note that the music. I think it's good. The music's really great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's. weird because you know it's, it's definitely that kind of music in the game where it's like 
the music isn't commanding its presence very often. Yeah. Um, but it being there adds so much to the tone of the game. It was funny, actually. When I was playing along, I had sound effects off, but music still on. And I was listening to a podcast, and they were getting into an intense part, and then War Drum started, and I thought yeah. it was part of the podcast. So I was going, and I was like, wait, these don't fit. And then I just like turned off the podcast, and then it got fucking epic, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. that was sweet. Yeah. Some really, really cool music. <laughs> yep. Um, it had some interesting mechanics, too, regarding, uh, so your crew, you can kind of go on, like, oh, what do you call it, like a pilgrimage or a, uh, well, for, a journey, Yeah, I for guess. A lot of it, you're in... Uh, a, word I'm a caravan. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, kind of journeying from place to place because um, there's this threat. I can't remember the name of the enemy. Uh, dredge? Dredge. Yeah, that's yep. it. So they're these kind of like mechanical type enemies. Yeah, that's what I got from them. They're kind of cool they looking. They look mechanical anyways. Kind of like uh, uh, yeah, the robot guys from Legend of Zelda. It's actually what they reminded me yes. a lot. Yeah, totally. Of, um, yeah. yeah, so they're kind of like that and yeah, they're pretty cool. They're very kind of threatening, especially like on the battlefield and stuff. Yeah, and they yeah, are. a lot of a lot of the story is just like, hey, we need to get away from these guys. This isn't safe. We need to kind of like the White Walkers in uh, in uh, Game of Thrones. Yep, that's that's how I thought of it for the most yeah, part. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So, uh, but what's cool about it is, so you're traveling in these parts, and then you have supplies. Yeah, that are coming into effect and morale with your crew. So now, as you're going along. You get to make decisions and you'll like come across a city and people are starving and it's like, well, do we give the people food or do we just let them die? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you kind of have to make these these moral decisions. Yeah. And they, they affect your caravan, too. It is in some pretty interesting ways because, yeah, supplies, obviously, you don't want to run out of those or else you start losing people, start people dying. from the caravan, yeah. which is really important. Because and it decreases your morale. <laughs> yeah. That, too. And... Uh, you know, it's really important because you come across fights. Yeah. In uh, when you, as your caravan's traveling along, and you have to make the decision of, okay, am I like the hero king person, like going to take on a whole bunch of the enemies? Yeah. Um, myself, and like, or am I going to completely rely on the fighters in my caravan? Yeah. Um, you know, and you get to kind of choose what balance you end up using for that, and. Um, yeah, so you want to keep your um, numbers and your morale up because if your morale is up, whenever you go into those fights, you get extra special actions. Okay. Basically. So yeah, it's kind of like this fun thing that you're always kind of balancing and it's really the only thing that relates the out of combat stuff with the in combat stuff. Yeah, there's a big divide. Yeah, they feel like two very different games. Like the out of combat stuff is very kind of visual novel. Yeah. Like, and then combat stuff is just really great. Um, Though, you do get to, uh, like, uh, level up your characters, and you do get to add different equipment, kind of, to your characters. There's, like, one item slot, as yeah, far as I can tell. Slot, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it made, it made a pretty big impact, I guess. And, you know, it's kind of cool, though, when you're going in your caravan, you get, at any point, you can just stop, stop and make a tent. And then that increases your morale a bit, yeah. but it also uses up your supplies as well. Yeah. So you kind of have to decide on when you want to do that. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's also so. Yeah, I mentioned like when your guys go down to zero strength, they don't die; they get injured. Yes. And that injured thing really sucks because if you bring injured people into combat, then um, they start with decreased strength. Yeah. And you know they become real useless real quick oh yeah and uh the way to combat that is to yeah set up a tent and like rest, rest. yeah yeah so that's it's a really important thing to do yeah, if you don't manage it well then you get into some pretty shitty situations did you get into a shitty situation i did so i played Tell about three and a half it. hours and i i meant to play much much more yesterday but uh um basically i, I went back on and it put me back a little bit, back one fight. Okay. And, you know, I got the decision before the fight about, like, how much of my own troops did I want to use before going into this. Yeah. Um, and, and I did that fight. This was uh, Saturday night or whatever. Um, and, yeah, so I did that fight. It, it went really well. Used some of my troops. Okay, fine. And then... Whenever I signed on last night, um, 
I didn't have those troops anymore. Oh, no. But that fight wasn't completed, and it had already made the decision for me. Oh, no. So I had to redo that fight. Yeah. And the fight was harder. Yeah. Because it basically went with the option as if, like, oh, I'll take him on on my own. Oh, Instead man. Instead of being, like, like I, I went for a more defensive option, so I didn't have to fight too much because I had some injured people, and at that point, I could not rest. Yeah. My guys. Um, so, yeah, I had to do that. And then it launches you into another fight immediately afterwards. Which so I then you were fucked. Which I then was like, fuck, I have so many injured guys because like, I went into this fight with some injured guys and like this was a big fight. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I just need to rely on my troops. And I didn't understand how that system worked. Okay. Like I thought it'd be fine just like throw a whole bunch in there because like, I had 760 barrel and like 180 fighters. And, yeah. and afterwards, like, um, 180 fighters died. You died. Oh. <laughs> Want to return the last checkpoint? And it took me where like, I logged back in. I was just like, fuck sakes. Yeah. yeah. So you gave up? So I gave up. I was not in the mood to play anymore. No, fair After enough. that little man. experience. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I started playing it. I, uh, I'm sure if I was in the right mood, it would have been fine. But I just started getting bombarded by text. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to click through all this. And then I accidentally clicked on a couple decisions. And I'm like, well, the rest don't matter now. So I just kind of <laughs> kept going. Nice. And then just would like jump from combat section to combat section, which, again, not really. I don't know. See, where do, where should I come down on this? Is that the game's fault? Or is this just not a type of game that was for me at the time? I mean, I think it's a combination of the two. Yeah, it's, it's weird for the game to be pretty in-depth visual novel and a very difficult um, tactics strategy game at the same time. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, you, you need to either like both those games or be in the mood for both those games to play the game at all. And, you know, I think that's one thing that certainly hurts the game's appeal. Yeah. And my ability to recommend it to other people. Okay. Wow. You wouldn't recommend this game. I, I would if people like visual novels and tactics yeah. games, but you know they need to like both those things. So there's fewer people that I could recommend this to because of that. It was 100% more visual novel than I expected. It was a lot more, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we were talking about something like this earlier. So the, the background art and everything is beautiful. Yeah. The line drawn art, I didn't like as much. Like the Yeah, the there's this... Char- yeah. Yeah, I showed, showed some screenshots of friends and stuff, and they were very on board with it too like some artist friends too it just doesn't look 100 percent. it doesn't doesn't look great it's it's weird too because honestly i was really early on i was really blown away by the art in the game because yeah. it puts you into the combat oh yeah the combat section early on but it's inside this like uh oh yeah super town awesome. hall yeah and like the depth that they use there is fucking amazing because there's like these st- struts and like beams yeah the roof they the start off hall. strong super yeah. close super close to the uh screen and then there's you know your warriors way down there and there's like different kind of levels and yeah. you know the walls go up and like there's this beautiful use of depth in there and the backgrounds generally have a great use of depth too with you, yeah. know, you know trees kind of in the foreground big mountains in the background beautiful vistas and stuff like that but then for this freaking character art there is zero fucking depth oh yeah used in the character art and it I don't know I, that's a totally valid art style but why why the hell did you use it here? And I feel like it was because they were trying to go for like a more primitive kind of art style for mm-hmm. that stuff, so it kind of matches up with Viking. It gave more. me an eighties vibe. Like an eighties animation television show or something. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, like the a line He-Man art or something like that, yeah. Type stuff. But yeah. I don't know, even even He Man wasn't that flat with no, his coloring. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Some of my artist friends said it just looked lazy. Yeah. Is is kind of like how it ended up being and yeah, I agree. I was I wasn't a big fan of the character portrait stuff, but I don't know. The rest of the game's fucking beautiful. Yeah, but it's unfortunate though because the majority of the game you're looking at the character portrait stuff. Yeah. While reading through a massive wall of text. Yeah. I don't know. That that just sucked me out of it, man. Yeah, that's fair. I think I don't know. One of one of the worst things for me with that all the text stuff is it's so weird about like the perspective of it because you aren't just one character. The character you no. are actually bounces around and the game addresses you as if you are that character. I honestly had no idea who I was. 
<laughs> I, yeah, you aren't anybody, yeah. but you are all these people, and it's like characters that you learn, and then you become them. Yeah, and I don't know. It's 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 so so weird to me. Just it's Game so of Thronesy weird. for sure. <sighs> like the well, books, like the Game books. Of Thrones, though, because like yeah. it's very yeah. It's like Game of Thrones, and if it went like I. Whenever I went to a character's perspective. And it's like, what? With that kind of first person, it's like, who? Who? Uh, who? Uh, who am I now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't have that uh, that consistency Yeah. of uh, a main character. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's fine to have multiple main characters or even just bounce around from character perspectives, but. I would just prefer to know who I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just treat, it, treat it third person all the time if that's yeah. what you're going to do. I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think it definitely could have used a narrator. Yeah, I think so too. It just didn't have enough of that in it. It was just, yeah, just a lot of text, man. Yeah. I don't know. That was so weird for me. Yeah. So weird. Um, another thing I didn't like too much was the tutorial and how they did it. Okay. It was very hand holdy. Press this Super button. Super hand holdy. Press this button. Then press this button. Yeah, and it's like I'm not really learning by doing this, and like it's weird too, because like you know it's a bit of a trend for games to do that kind of stuff, but this is one of the genres that needs it the fucking least. It is so easy to put it's pretty intuitive put the player into. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's fairly intuitive and simple, like that. Yeah, you can do, but also like it's so easy to put the ca- player into a fairly safe sandbox and just let them learn the mechanics on their own yeah exactly they'll figure it out yeah the one thing it took me a while to figure out that they may not may not have explained to me was uh like when i was an archer when you're in shot range it doesn't show that it does very well no yeah it shows it but it's super subtle yeah so like it took me a while to figure it out yeah you, you get your selection on where to move and It'll highlight how much damage you can do to enemies yeah. if if you can hit them from whatever square it is you're at, and that's your only real indicator. And the other thing I didn't like very much is there are some characters that you can move and then can move again, some that you can't. Yes, which is annoying because like yeah. you just expect to have that all the time. And also, for for most of these type of games, you click on where you want to move. And then it shows you what you can do from that spot. Yeah. So, you know, it'll show you your full attack range and all that kind of stuff. And this has special abilities that have, you know, varying ranges too. I would have mm-hmm. liked to know those. Yeah. Would um, be nice. But you can't you can't really do those things. You have to move to that square and then check your attack range from there. Check your special ability range yeah. from there and like you have to keep that stuff it's in like your head once you already move you can't undo that action yeah I, you've, I already, found there was, you've already done it the game had so much mental burden for that kind of stuff which yeah you, the player doesn't really need to carry all that mental burden no it's like i'm not going to count squares in my head you yeah. know of like uh, oh yeah this attack only does four or remembering sure this character that is yeah. just an orange shade of this other character actually has this different ability yeah that you know has its own range and its own effect and does a different thing to the end. I kind of found that too with uh, the different like uh, human characters. I would kind of get them fucked up all the time because like they look so similar. Like I don't know. I like the classic Final Fantasy style of like oh white mage that's the healer, black mage that's the damage deal. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like instant recog- You instantly recognize it. But with this, it was kind of like a. Oh, uh, which one's this one? Okay, I'm already gonna move. Oh crap! Yeah, it's the it happens, wrong one. It happens with the uh, barrel later on too. Yeah, in chapter three, where you get a, a two that just look the same, but one has orange clothing, one has green clothing. Yeah, exactly. And then you're like, oh crap! Which one's this one? Is this the one that can do the spinny attack or not? Yeah, yeah. no. Like I, I had one guy who could do like super awesome damage, and one guy who's like super tanky, and like I always confused the two of them and i don't want to be confusing the two of those guys no yeah, yeah so yeah it was kind of a bummer i don't know but uh there is some positives of the combat that we talked about earlier with the cool systems that they've been play i again i uh, i'm totally with you with the armor and strength system yeah it's sweet it's super super cool i, w- yeah. I want to see other games steal that <laughs> like, yeah because it's know, just it like creates so many interesting situations and you know it even creates interesting situations when you level up because then you can be like, hey, I'm going to have this character who's really good at breaking armor. Yeah, exactly. And like having a ranged person who's really good at breaking armor, oh, man, that feels yeah. so good because yeah. you hit them from range. And the next turn, your other characters, like your melee characters, get in range. And then, yeah, yeah. It, just, it just feels great to be able to like make those choices while leveling people up. 
I'm curious if this was just just what was happening to me or if this is actually like an element in the game but when you hit a guy it taunts them into hitting you next or does it make them more likely because that's what it seemed like sometimes and then sometimes it wasn't I think that's just the AI okay yeah okay because like I was like I want to taunt this guy over here and then sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't so I'm like oh is this just random there's or... a viral in chapter 3 that can taunt okay yeah I was just trying to do it with my archers to like get them in specific positions to oh uh, yeah yeah but it wasn't really working but I was like but sometimes they do it so I don't <laughs> yeah. know it's just AI make their own decisions yep AI doing AI stuff. Yeah. Um, something else. Oh, yeah. Leveling up thing. Like, I liked it and I didn't like it at the same time. The game is really short. Yes. And that makes the leveling up system weird. Yep. Because you're spending a lot of time to invest into these guys for a 10-hour game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you can tell that, too. Like, so basically, whenever you level up, you get two points, just two points to invest in like seven different stats, but th- those stats can only go up between two to four more points. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It, you can max out your strength real quick. Yeah. You can like, max out whichever stat you want. Real, yeah. Like, super quick, like just a level or two. And, you know, the game kind of chokes you on um, leveling up those characters because it basically they earn a promotion, but you have to spend, uh, I forget the name of the points. Uh, I'm thinking recognition, but they have a different word for it. Yeah. Um, and you spend those points to actually level up the character and get the points to put into the character stats. Yeah. But something I didn't like about it was that the character had to get the kill to get the promotion. Now, that works in a lot of cases, but if you have a support character, that's not going to work too well for them. You know what I mean? Like, they're not they're not designed to kill. Yeah. It's, I found there wasn't too many like support characters. Like okay. most of them are capable of killing that type of stuff. And yeah. you know, if you're looking to level up like one of your archers or whatever, then you need to purposely set set things up so that your archer is the one who's gonna get the kill on it. Right. Which is fine. Like that's that's how they earn the XP for the pr- promotion or whatever. But Okay. I don't know. It's uh, I it, it, the other side of that too is it kinda naturally led me into like these are the guys I use a lot, the guys that are good for me. Right. They're the ones getting the kills. Yeah. And the ones I'm promoting. Yeah. So it just made sense. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's a weird system to fit into such a short game. And, you know, another thing kind of similar to that is actually the items. Because you come across, like, shops or merchants or whatever that you can buy these items at. But this isn't some free-roaming game where you can go back right. and buy those items later on once you have more stuff. Like, yeah. It's either you buy it now or you don't. Or you miss it. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah, so, I don't know, I, I, I found that super weird, like, I think this game would be pretty freaking dope if you could just kind of wander around where you want to go and And, yeah, speaking, speaking on the items, um, I didn't really like how they were just, like, level capped is kind of the thing, like, you can use this item if you're specific level, but, like, that yeah. seemed to be the primary requirement. I oh. mean, it's kind of nice that that's the only requirement. It would suck to like yeah, skill based or yeah, uh, it would suck to have this like dodge yeah. item. It's like yeah. you can only put this on a human, or you can only put it right. on an archer type person. Like, I just felt like I don't know. Maybe it's only at the beginning, but it felt like it just kept going up, and I was like, well, only this person can use this, so I guess the rest of the people get this. Like, there's not much strategy yeah, to well, it, as in like it kind of gave me a goal to like level some people up before right. others that I normally wouldn't. Oh, okay, it's like I think there was a. Yeah, there's a strength dodge for one of my archers. I wanted to give her that item. Uh-huh. Um, so I leveled her up to make sure she could use it. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I, d- I didn't feel that was too bad, but it, I don't know. It's just a weird system put in like, this very linear, yeah, short, relatively short story game. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't know if I'm going to finish the game. I would... If you like visual novels, I'm going to recommend it. But uh, if you don't, and you're just looking for like some tactical gameplay, I think there's better options out there for you. Sadly, yeah. The tactical gameplay part is so great. Like, I yeah. freaking love it. But but it's few and far between. There's just yeah, a lot of visual novel. Yeah, it's not that much of it. A lot of other stuff you got to get through to get to it. Yeah. And yeah, if you just rush through, you're probably actually going to be punished and having a significantly worse time. Exactly. As opposed so, to reading and making smart choices. And yeah stuff like that yeah so i don't know it's uh <sighs> it's a good game <laughs> like, yeah it's not a bad I, game i know it's a good game like, yeah it's, it's just not almost uh, all that i enjoyed it's you, you gotta be in the mood for text heavy visual novel and difficult um 
tactics, tactics strategy. combat. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Speaking of the difficulty, you turned your difficulty down. I right? did. When when did you do that? What prompted you into turning it down? I died once, and I was like, oh, I got to get through the rest of this game. Like so you I lost just, the fight. And yeah, and I was okay. like, fuck it. Yeah, I was, I was kind of curious because like. I think this is one of those games that a lot of people would like start doing some of the fights and just being like, "Oh shit, this is this is tricky," and just turn it down before yeah. they actually see like a failure state. Yeah, and it's interesting too. Through turning it down, you don't get injuries, is the biggest thing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, that's humongous. I mean, at least it's. <laughs> I was worried at first whenever I got my first injury that it was gonna be like Fire Emblem. This character's dead. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have been like nuts, but it would be so hard for them to do it with how the story. Yeah, no, for sure. That? Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's, it, if you're into this st- type of stuff, totally do it. But yeah. if not, nah. If I didn't, if I wasn't required because of this podcast to play a different indie game every week, I'd probably go back to it. But I know I have to do something next week. And what we're doing <laughs> next week is Firewatch, Kev. Oh, you're moving on a little quick. There's one little oh, tidbit okay. about Banner yeah, Saga yeah, yeah, yeah. to throw out. Yes. QA was actually done by a studio local to us. Our friends. Yeah, friends. I had plenty of conversations with people. Actually, one of them was a really good Smash buddy of mine. Yeah, Smash Bros. Conversations that is. and beers. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of cool that uh, you know, fairly successful game was. Yeah, worked on here and, and an indie y- game too. Like, yeah, man, far it's away. pretty cool. Yeah, you won't hold that bug against them though, because ultimately, I don't know how big that one would have been their fault, kind of thing. I don't know. A large portion of like where my anger came came from was mostly just misunderstanding, like yeah. how this stuff works and how it plays and. You know how the checkpoints work too. The saving yeah. is like, I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah. The, there you hit checkpoints and it saves, and there's no really telling where that'll be. Yeah. I figured. Oh, hey, after I do this fight in this tower, it'll save, right? Eh, nope. Maybe not. It saved beforehand, <laughs> and it won't. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. But yeah. So you know, if this sounds like something you're into, I'd recommend it. But Good if point. you're kind of on the fence, eh, you probably skip this one. Yeah. But yeah, so next week we'll be doing Firewatch. It's kind of a walking simulator game. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Got the emotional lots stories. Of good things about the story. Got the good voice actors. It's got someone from The Office in it. No, not The Office. Uh, of, uh, the show with the drinking and the Mad Men. That's the show. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's cool. So I'm excited about that. And uh, also, this is the time of the summer sales on Steam. What's your pick of the week, Kev? Um, I'm going to go Stardew Valley. Yes. It's good. I know there's a lot of good games in there, but I fucking love Stardew. A lot of time. And, you know, you can get some gameplay in so that you're all prepped and ready to go when the Switch version comes out. There you go. Uh, it's on real cheap too, right? It's like ten bucks, I think. Ten dollars, not it's bad. So worth it. So much gameplay you can get out of that. Nice. My recommendation would be uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. You heard that right, Necro Dancer. Necro Dancer. It's cool. It's a rhythm game. Yeah. It's like a dungeon exploring thing. You kind of. It's like Step Mania, but not i picked that one up in the gog sale actually so. nice yeah, yeah i'd recommend it it's, it's it's only on for a couple bucks it's not too bad uh if you can't tell i am extremely exhausted i probably got like three hours sleep last night <laughs> it's been a of yep days so uh yeah so this is namecast we do a different indie game every single week you know if you want you can join in on the gameplay and, and play the games have the conversation with us but if you don't that's fine too and you mm-hmm. can just be an observer or a, a listener of types. Yeah. And that's that's fine too. So, you know, you can catch us out on all the places. We are at youtube.com slash namecast. Mm. We are also on podcast services around the globes if you're into iTunes and Google, uh, Play. Google Play. So, you know, you can catch us on there. Be sure to write a review of some type or what, uh, what do people do? They, they write I- reviews on iTunes. That's all you can do. Yeah. You tie a cat to a balloon. Yep. Cool. And then you got a flying cat, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. So then they're looking down on everybody, literally and figuratively. <laughs> oh, that's what cats do. Cats. Yeah. So be sure to do that, and uh, you know, if you want, if you if you just know us and you don't know of any other cool people, there's cool game people at Cartridge Club. Yeah. You should go check them out. Cartridge I haven't plugged Club them in a while. Org. Yeah, dot org or is it dot gov? I think it's dot gov. <laughs> gov. Yeah, yeah. They're a government organization. Yeah, no. So yeah, yeah cartridgeclub <laughs> dot gov. Go there. Uh, no, no, they're they're fine. They're they're nice people. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that's the end of this one. Uh, help us take down Bonus Barrel, guys. It's just sure. it's just a man and his journey to own a trebuchet and take down his friends. <laughs> bonus Barrel.
Yeah. You literally just tip them over, roll them down a hill. Yeah, there you go. Name, name cast going to win. Pump. Woo. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.